Hello, thank you for tubing in. Today we're breaking down vitamin K. If you're asking which one, you're not alone, and that's what compelled us to go down this road. The primary differences between K1 and K2 are the food sources they are found in and the different benefits of each type. First up, K1, known for its crucial role in blood clotting and bone health. Let's dive deeper into its benefits and food sources. K1 does not have the same vital properties as K2, although it has other helpful qualities. K1, also known as philoquinone, is primarily recognized for its role in blood clotting. It helps activate proteins that are necessary for the clotting process, thereby assisting in wound healing and reducing excessive bleeding. Moreover, K1 plays a significant role in bone health by supporting the synthesis of proteins, essential for bone mineralization. Now let's talk about food sources rich in K1. Leafy green vegetables are among the best sources of this nutrient. Spinach, kale, Swiss chard, and collard greens are all excellent options. Other vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and asparagus also contain significant amounts of K1. Lucky for us, we love those veggies. Additionally, certain plant oils, such as soybean oil and canola oil, are good sources of K1. Nuts and seeds, particularly pine nuts and sesame seeds, can also contribute to your K1 intake. It's important to note that K1 is a fat-soluble vitamin meaning it's best absorbed when consumed with dietary fat. So incorporating these K1-rich foods into meals containing healthy fats can enhance absorption. That's not too complicated, but get ready to dive into the amazing world of K2. This often overlooked nutrient is a powerhouse when it comes to supporting your health in ways you might not even realize. K2 is basically a manager of calcium, which plays critical roles for bone density, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes through the management of insulin resistance. Also known as menaquinone, some say it is like the superhero of nutrients. While it shares some similarities with K1 in its role of supporting blood clotting, K2 really shines when it comes to bone health and heart health. It helps direct calcium to where it's needed most, which means stronger bones and potentially a healthier heart. By activating proteins that regulate calcium metabolism, K2 ensures that calcium gets deposited in your bones where it belongs rather than accumulating in your arteries or soft tissues. From the Journal of American College of Cardiology, K2 activates a protein called MGP through a process called gamma carboxylation. That means K2 activates a protein which inhibits vascular calcification and promotes decalcification. And... When taken in conjunction with D3, calcium is directly sent to the proper locations in your body. We have covered this too, just look through our videos. But the point is, if MGP is not carboxylated, it can't pull calcium out of the arteries. And studies show anticoagulants, such as warfarin, will block MGP and people on the medication or any vitamin K inhibitor have been observed to have more calcification in their arteries. So... Studies have suggested that adequate K2 intake could help prevent arterial calcification, which is a major risk factor for heart disease. And that means K2 does play a crucial role in cardiovascular health. Now let's talk about where you can find this superhero nutrient. While it's not as widely distributed in foods as K1, K2 can still be found in several delicious sources. Fermented foods are your best bet, with natto, a Japanese fermented soybean dish, being one of the richest sources of K2, and experts say that's why they have very low rates of heart disease. We don't know what that tastes like. Please comment if you've tried it. Thankfully, K2 is also found in dairy, and that makes us happy. Cheese, especially varieties like Gouda and Brie, also contains K2, thanks to the bacteria involved in the fermentation process. And let's not forget about other dairy products like yogurt and kefir, which can contribute to your K2 intake as well. Lastly, note that dairy and meat have low levels compared to fermented foods such as natto. Wow, K2 helps with preventing cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, severe arthritis, and plays a significant role in the reduction of type 2 diabetes. Remember, just like its cousin K1, K2 is fat-soluble. So enjoy these K2-rich foods as part of a balanced diet that includes healthy fats for optimal absorption. So that's it for now. We hope you stay tuned for updates. We do appreciate the likes, shares, and subscribers. Please do join us on our mission and check out our many other helpful videos.